Hey, Archery Talk, this is Lucas, and today I'm having a chance to chat with Josh Sidebottom from Elite Archery. He's a lead engineer, and he's going to talk to us about the brand new all-carbon Elite Aero Bow. Josh, welcome uh, to Archery Talk. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks for thanks for having me. Oh, man, my absolutely my my pleasure. I, I was super excited to talk to somebody from Elite as soon as we heard about this this bow might be happening, and uh, I figured you might be able to to tell us uh, more about it, seeing as you're the, uh, the engineer behind it. Yeah, yeah, there's... Um... There's a lot of cool stuff with this bow where it's been a long time in the works it's it's taken us a while to get to this point where we're ready to ready to go but um it's been worth the wait um bow overall is a 31 and a quarter inch axle to axle it's got a really big brace height of seven and a quarter but it's still shooting 336 feet per second um you know it'll cover draw length ranges from 25 and a half to 31 inches um and comes in just under four pounds so you know you compare it to a our, our equivalent aluminum bow flagship bow and it's about a half a pound lighter so i guess what why did elite decide they wanted to build a, a carbon riser bow you know it was it was something our customers have been asking for um obviously we're not the first to do a carbon bow but um it seemed like there was some momentum behind it and um you know, we try to give our customers what they're what they're asking for uh, within within our capabilities. So, we it's a segment of the market that we weren't playing in that we also wanted to get uh, get involved in. So, all that kind of drove us towards initiating a project to at least start down the path of feasibility to see what it, what it would take for us to do it. And obviously, we got through that stage of the project and and pushed forward uh to the point we are now where we're launching the era so i guess how long of a process was this kind of from ideation to to having like a working prototype to actually being ready to release it it's been uh about three years um so initially the idea to concept development um working with different um, manufacturers uh, and other experts um that helped us along the way uh and then iteration after iteration of the design until we got something we were we were happy with um it, it's definitely a different animal than designing an aluminum riser and um we've learned a lot throughout the process and we really didn't settle uh there were there were multiple times throughout this you know th this time last year we we were shooting for a launch this time last year but there was just some things we weren't 100 percent happy with so we held off and went went back and got those issues taken care of and uh got a product that we're really happy with as far as like from an engineering perspective is there were there some challenges with a with a carbon riser that you don't have to deal with with an aluminum riser definitely um yeah there's a lot i mean what one of the challenges is the the finishing and decoration process um you know the carbon risers won't accept the heat of uh, like a powder coating process so we had to uh, develop a new process for decoration um, and then in the design side when you think of an aluminum riser when we analyze the stress and rigidity of an aluminum riser in the design aluminum's uniform throughout um, where a carbon riser is made up of multiple different materials and grades of material throughout. So predicting the rigidity and strength um, is a little bit more difficult, but then it also gives you more flexibility. Say there's an area of the riser that you want to be a little stronger or stiffer. Um, in the layup process of the carbon riser, they can add a, a stronger carbon or a thicker carbon in certain areas um to really optimize the design as well that's uh, i appreciate the insight on, on that there is there i guess again i'm not i'm i'm, I'm someone with no manufacturing experience at all is there is there a lot more kind of like um variance between like right right bow to bow riser riser and how the carbon performs or once once you have the formula down it's going to work across across the board yeah that's really controlled within the process of the manufacturing and the layup um you know they're once they're late the carbon's all laid up onto the riser it 
it's molded, so the molded parts are pretty consistent from one to the next. And you know, as long as the layup is done consistently, they're um, pretty repeatable. Um, you know, throughout the process, we've done a lot of deflection testing on the risers uh, as we've gone through different iterations and throughout a batch um, that they're pretty repeatable across uh, across the lot. It's similar to what you what you'd see on an aluminum riser. And so I guess outside of like the, you know, the carbon everyone knows carbon bows are going to be a little bit lighter and they're a little nicer to handle in the, when the weather gets cold because they don't yeah. kind of react to that freezing cold like aluminum does. Are there any other kind of benefits with carbon that maybe the average user, myself included, is not really thinking about? Uh, I, I think there's differences. Um, the, the, it has a different feel to it uh, on the shot. And I mean, the aluminum bows are pretty dead now also, but the, uh, the carbon, this, the carbon era, I think, will surprise people on on how it, how what good it feels on the shot. Um, the rigidity, it, it's hard to put a blanket statement over it because you could design a carbon riser that's more rigid than an aluminum, or a carbon riser that's less. It really comes down to the materials of construction and the geometry. So, but we uh, we wanted to build a bow that. Someone who is familiar with Elite and likes Elite bow would feel right at home with, uh, but out of carbon material. So, uh, one of the one of the things that we a few few main objectives of this um, one to make it lighter weight than we could make our aluminum bows. Um, you know, I, to me, if I'm going to spend the extra money on a on a carbon bow, I'd like it to be lighter than the aluminum bow is. Um, we wanted it to have set technology, which is our adjustable limb pocket, uh, which you can tune your bow by uh, basically changing the loading on the limbs without needing a bow press. That was a, a had to have. Um, and the grip, you know, some times in, in a carbon bow, the grip is a little different than maybe the aluminum bow, but we wanted the same feel out of our grip on the carbon that we have on the aluminum. Um, so those are all very, very important features for us when designing this new bow. So I guess from a, from a shooter's perspective, I guess what is outside of outside of the actual carbon riser, what will uh, what's different about this bow versus say the Envision or the new Omni or anything like that? Yeah, there's definitely going to be more similarities between the Omnia and the Era um, than the Envision, and, and that's primarily the difference between the Envision and these new bows is going to be the cam system. The, the new SP cam system with the micro-adjustable cable stops uh, and the performance that we're getting out of that, that new cam is going to be um, the big difference. But comparing it to the Omnia, the which is our aluminum flagship bow for this year. The biggest difference is going to be, uh, aside from the obvious material difference in the riser, is the brace height. So the Omni is a six inch brace height bow. This is a seven and a quarter inch brace height bow. So uh, it's going to be a little bit more forgiving, uh, a little easier drawing, uh, a little smoother drawing uh, in the carbon bow. But for both bows on this new SP cam system, they're, they both ship with our performance mods, but we also have smooth mods available if someone desires that as well. Uh, it's a little shorter axle to axle than the Omnia. The Omnia is 32 inches. This is 30, just over 31. Uh, and then the weight, so it's a it's a half a pound lighter um, than the aluminum counterpart to it. How soon uh, do you think we'll start seeing these show up at your local dealers? Uh, we. We're shipping them out this week, um, so it, it's it's going to be more of a constant flow of them going forward from here um, out the door. So, and we've got a lot of orders for them already. We've been pre-selling them into the dealers. So, uh, if if you're a consumer out there that wants to check out the area era, uh, the best thing to do would be to contact your local dealer and and go see them. Um, but yeah. Throughout the month of December, we'll be shipping them out to all the dealers that um, have orders in place and, and, and going into next year. But we've got a, uh, the dealers have really hopped on board to this, this new segment for us. So we, we've got a lot of bows in queue to get produced and get out the door.
do you foresee this kind of like again? I know you can't give me exact numbers, but like how how much of the market for elite will this will the air? Do you think kind of take up versus like the Omni? Like the, like the, I would assume the Omni is going to sell more because it's going to be less expensive and and all that. But is it is it is it closer than we think it is, or is it or is it pretty one sided? Do you think? Uh, it's hard to say. It's so early. Uh, I would say that the initial reception to it has exceeded our expectations. Um, I think going into it, we we probably were thinking maybe like a 70-30 mix between the aluminum to, to carbon. And I think it it's clo it's closer to 50-50 than we were expecting. Um, but there, the Omnia, which we launched in October, has already started to have some sell-through and, and reorders. And um, so it, it's a little hard to gauge currently. I think you know once we get through kind of the first quarter, we'll have a better idea, but it's definitely exceeded our expectations and we've had to adjust our production plans already based on the initial feedback. That seems, that seems like a good problem to have. Yep, yeah, it always is. Uh, gives us a reason to buy some more CNC machines and, and uh, continue to develop our manufacturing here. Well, Josh, I can't thank you enough for your time and uh, and kind of letting people know exactly what they can expect. And I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing these in the shops. Yeah, sounds good. Appreciate the the time, Lucas, and let me talk about our new bow. Well, thank you so much.